Hey everyone, welcome to Hollywood Hills episode number 29. The world is still a beautiful place. We are still rocking and rolling and getting ourselves ready to go racing once again. But Farm Jam is still a week and a half away. So in the meantime, we're still plowing on here with all of our mid-season edits for the GXCCs covering the first four rounds of the championship. Before this kind of enforced mid-season break and we go into the second half of the tour. Last week was all about the junior shows and we showed you the kids that are running inside the top five. This week it's all about the quaddies. And the quads have got a couple of new characters in play, a couple of new categories in play, and the numbers are starting to seriously, seriously tighten up. Stay tuned afterwards as well because we're going to be going up close and personal and meeting one of our key partners and sponsors for the GXCC edits as well as here at Hollywood Hills. That's going to be RME, so stay on point. But for now, it's the Quad Show. This GXCC racing action powered by Dunlop is brought to you by SPX Logistics, Dunlop, RME bearings and transmission, and driven by Bikers Warehouse. With a focus on the quads for 2021's GXCC championship, four rounds counted and four rounds remaining. This is the halfway knuckle of the championship. And these are the riders and the players to watch as we go forward to the end of this amazing 2021 championship tour. 2020 gave us a sporadic event where we actually had to go out and do a five round championship to nail down our numbers on the page. This time around, with eight rounds on the calendar, it looks like it's going to be a busy one. New venues as well. Rustenburg kicked things off nicely with a flat out wide open track. New sponsors on the flags and a couple of new riders on the gate as well. Round number two was Moddy Molly. This was going to be a sand pit of a race with bush felt for the guys to race at. And it was going to shine a light on the more technically gifted riders where the speeds weren't going to be as high. And it was going to be all about bike suspension and tire setup on the quads. Round number three was going to be the fast one. And before the sun came up, it was going to be the wet one as well. The quads and the juniors went out in the morning session and it was a moist, freezing cold affair. But towards the end of the race, it was a real fast one. A couple of bikes did blow the engines on the top end, but the guys that brought it home would walk away with some good numbers on the championship. And then round number four, the cold one, just a couple of weeks back at Fentersdorp, a very mixed bag of terrain, the perfect setup for all the quads. They weren't too happy with the cold water splashes first thing in the morning, but as soon as that first lap was out the way, they realized Fentersdorp was the ultimate racetrack to get those points on the plate. For our ladies gate, it's been a little bit thin on the ground. The first round only giving us three riders to count. And then we started to get between four and five riders throughout the rest of the championship. One of the Johnny come lately on the tour and running fifth place in points with just one round scored. But the one round that she did get the numbers on the page was a second place. And that was at the final round at Fentersdorp. Ursula Statler coming all the way from Botswana, her first taste of GXCC, and she's on the cards with a number five on championship points. Renette Duplessis was a no-show at round number one, but she scored a win and her first ever GXCC win at that at round number two. That got her on the charts and on the pages, but two zeros coming out of rounds three and four shows that she's going to really have to pull something out of the bag at the final couple of events on the circuit. In it to win it for the full championship tour, along with her husband Francois, Celeste Berger is in great form. She took her first ever GXCC win at round number one. She backed that up with a podium, taking third at round number two, and then a second win of the tour at round number three. She looked like she was going to be on points as well to go and get all of the cheese and walk away with the championship points lead. But a zero at the final round before the halfway marker of the season dropped her down a notch. She sits third on the championship chase. On the race then and in the championship, she's going to be going up against the ever consistent, smooth and clever riding styles of Judith Cricker. She's only been racing GXCCs full time for the last two years and this year she has come in in sublime form. Worked on her fitness big time, a little bit of turning the spanners on the bike to get a better setup on the wagon and a third place, fourth and two thirds puts her in the sweet spot running second place. She'll be desperate to get those high finishes. She hasn't taken a second or a first yet on the tour but there's still a couple of races left as we close out the championship. 
Judith Crooker is on point at the moment though and looking in great form to hang on to that number two spot. For Liesl Barnard, she came back into the racing GXCC family at the beginning of the season at Rustenburg where she rolled out the Yamaha 450. She had a good result there, second place. But then she started to break out the big dog, the 1000cc four-wheel drive Renegade. It took her to another second place at round number two. Backed that up with another second place at round number three at the fast one. And then at the final round before the mid-season break at Fentersdorp, the 4x4 and Liesl Barnard finally hit the top step. She took the win at Fentersdorp and with it, the championship points lead. For the ladies out there, this is the woman to beat. Barnard is your championship points leader. We're expecting to see one or two ladies come back into the racing fold on the second half of the tour. But at the moment, the momentum is all about Liesl Barnard. 91 versus 78, that's at the top of the charts. That's Liesl Barnard versus Crooker, and then Berger, Duplessis, Statler, and Skipper. The six ladies with points on the plate, with three rounds remaining. For 2021, we also rolled out a brand new category in the quad racing series. These are the guys that were aged out of the Masters and will be henceforth known as the elder statesmen of the quad racing fraternity. They love the setup, they love the new format, and they love the chance to be able to go and chase those numbers. A lot of these guys were running around about fourth, fifth, and sixth place in the Masters category. Now that they have their standalone race and standalone inaugural championship, they are chasing the cheese in the three twos and ones now. Nico Schmidt, consistency is how he pays his bills. A six, a six, a fourth, and a zero puts him in a number five spot. Davi Devet rolls out the only Honda on the gate in this category, the big 450. Fifth place at the opening round, backs that up with another five spot, improves to fourth place, and then a no-show at the final round. If he was on form and it would have got a fourth or a third place at that final round, he could have well been challenging inside of the top three. For now, Davi Devet is your number four on the championship chase. Pitt Swanepoel has been great on the season as well. Gels perfectly with his big 700cc Raptor and he had a good setup at round number one. He came out the gate strong for his second place. At round number two, he really found his form at Modi Molly with his first win on the GXCC Tour ever. He gets that big chase. Then a zero at the fast one where he had mechanical issues and he backed it up and bounced back nicely with a third place at Fensersdorp. That moved him up into third for the Tour. If you start noticing, all of these guys have got a zero to their names at the moment. So the drop point system may come into play for them. For Peter Kersen, he has been amazing. He's taken most of the whole shots off the gates on the big 4x4 with a fourth place, a fourth place, a third and a second. There's only one place to go after that for Big Peter and that's a win. We think there's one on the cards in the second half of the season. At the moment, Peter Kersen on the big 4x4 Renegade is sitting in a sweet spot, second place on the championship. Francois Berger came out swinging this season as well. Him and his wife are GXCC through and through, and they may well be able to walk away with two wins at the moment. His wife sitting in strong numbers on her own championship chase, but for Francois, a win at round number one, a second place at round number two, and then two wins to close out the second half of the season. He really is the man to beat and is desperate to get his first ever GXCC big number one plate splattered on the front of his quad. Berger is in the form of his life right now and the wins have really upped his confidence level big time. He knows he is the guy to beat every time he swings a leg. That's Berger on top then ahead of Kursen, Swanepoel, Devet, Smith, Jakobs and Wilson. These are the guys with numbers on the page in the inaugural Quad Vet Championship. So who is left on the Masters gate? Some big players, believe you me, and a one or two guys that came out of the Quad 1 and Quad 2 championships as they too aged out. 2021 was the return of the DeSanti. Fernando De Santos and Roxy De Santos doing great work off the gate. For Fernando, a number five was a modest start for him. But when the track started to suit his style, he got a number two spot at round number two. He dropped down with some problems mechanically at round number three with his lowest finish of the season, having to take an eighth place. And then 
The technical nature of Fentestorp just didn't suit his aggressive riding style and he had to finish down in sixth place. The numbers though do add up and he does bring it home with points on the plate at every single round. That's why we see Fernando in a number five spot. For Roxy, similar situation. Does climb the ladder pretty well. A modest start to his championship and then a win at the second round. Saw him really come into his own. Round number three was all about fourth place. So we start to see some more consistency coming into play. And then round number seven, similar situation to Fernando. Just did not gel with the Fentestorp track. Had to drop down to a seventh place finish, but still enough points to stay inside the top five and remain fourth on championship points. So cool to have the DeSantai back in the box and two of them challenging for positions in the Masters Championship. For Xander Branken, he was under the 421 racing wing for many seasons. He is the one and only Can Am 450 racing out there, and he gets that thing hooked up well. He's one of the younger masters on the gate as well. He took a second place at round number one. He dropped one position at round number two with a third. He had some issues at round number six, and that's where we saw him have a massive crash, but still walked away with a sixth place finish. That's important for the championship. And then he responded and rebounded extremely well at Ventersdorp, taking a second place. We do believe there's a win on the cards for Branken at some point in this championship. And with three rounds remaining, he sits third on points. Coming out of the gate this season and historically, always on the Suzuki's. But this season, he broke out a freshie. The big 700cc Raptor was the perfect piece of the puzzle and the last roll of the dice. It was a win at round number one for Curbis Ferreira. He dropped down a position or two at round number two to take a fourth place and then improved to a third place at the fast one. That was all about the Heidelberg high-speed track. He would have probably be expected to have won that race, but a couple of other players came into play there. Third place there and then a fourth at the technical layout of Ventersdorp. Ferreira though, his consistency is paying the bills and that's why we see him getting the number two spot in the championship. That win at round number one certainly helped him out. The reigning champion coming out of 2020 in the Master Championship and also that was his first ever GXCC Championship, it's Philip Boyce. But he came into the beginning of the season with his number one machine, that's the KTM, out of action. He had to rock the old Suzuki, that's why we saw him take a fourth and a six. But since he got the KTM back pumping and running, the 525 machine that took him to the championship glory in 2020 has delivered the goods. A win at rounds number three and four. See Philip Boyce jump up from fourth place in the championship to lead at the halfway mark of the season. And now the champion is in defensive mode trying to back up his number one plate with another number one in 2021. Boyce on top with just two points advantage over Ferreira. So this is not over at all. And check how close Branken is as well. He is keeping them extremely honest. Roxy de Santos and Fernando de Santos are there with Jaco Krika just one position outside the top five in a number six ahead of Henny Macau, Paulo Sardino and HP Pretorius. For the Q2 category, the open class was going to be an interesting situation to watch out for. A couple of top players missing out of the action and also a couple of new machines starting to take up the chase. Apollo de Santos was out there as part of the DeSantis squad. They all rock the big 700cc Raptors and it is all action when you watch Apollo de Santos riding a quad flat out. Some of the more slower technical natured tracks didn't suit him, but when he was able to stretch the cable, he got the numbers on the page. A sixth, a fifth, a fifth, and then an eighth place keep him inside of the top five. And he is beating out a lot of key riders at the moment in the championship chase as well. Stefan Ferreira battled with consistency and mechanical issues and a ton of punches in the 2021 season. Thus far, everything is holding together on one of the older Suzuki's out there. He took a creditable fourth place ride at round number one. Round number seven was not to his liking out at Bella Bella, but he got back onto the mix at the fast track that was Heidelberg with the number fourth place and wasn't too far off the numbers with a six at the final round. Fourth place at the moment keeps him in striking distance of a potential top three come the end of the season. For David Stratum, it seemed like there was a lot of pressure on him coming into the beginning of the season. He flipped out off the line at round number one, but chased through the pack to take the opening round win. Then 
we started to see some more problems on the machine. A snap chain at round number two kept him out of the top three positions, which is exactly where he wanted to be. Then a zero at round number three keeps him out of the big numbers, but he took the final win of the season at Ventersdorf. That means he's carrying momentum forward into the second half of the season, and even with a fourth place and a zero, two wins keep him inside of the top three. Captain, consistency on the gate once again. The king of third places for the last probably four seasons of racing in the Q2s. Rian Dick is bringing home the bacon this time around though. Third place at round number one. Second at round number two. Back into his customary position of round number three at the fast one. And then a very solid ride in Ventersdorp to take him to fourth place. Putting the bike on the line and bringing it to the flag every single time is getting Rian Dick closer and closer to his big number one plate. He sits second at the moment with good numbers on the page going forward into the last three rounds of the tour. With his championship rivals all climbing over each other, desperate to get numbers on the page, it may be just the situation that Rian Dick needs to try and possibly go after his first win of the 2021 tour. But it's C.D. Hurson that is large and in charge at the moment. That KTM 500 is the perfect setup right now for the GXCC Championship Tour. He's the reigning number one plate coming out of 2020, where he held it all together under immense pressure. And he came out the gate with a very mature head on his shoulders. A second, a first, and two seconds puts him on the top of the charts. He's not made any mistakes as yet. And with just three rounds to go, he is in charge of this championship and putting together all the pieces to try and back up a number one plate with another number one plate and go double champ on GXCCs in 2020 and 2021. The SPX Logistics, KTM is on fire at the top of the charts. C.D. Hurson on the numbers at the moment. Every race started, every race finished, and an 11-point lead at the moment ahead of Rian Dick. David Stratum holds the momentum with the final win of the season, but he is only on the cards at the moment in third ahead of Ferreira de Santos. Janemann Besaitenhout might be the spoiler here, sixth place on points, but his pace shows he can run top threes. In the Q1s, it was all eyes on Keenan Hammond, with no one to play with at the front in the form of his arch rival, Gideon Jakobs. It was going to be new blood that came into the mix this time around. Stefanos Muller has been there or thereabouts for the last couple of seasons and this season he seems to have a really good package underneath him on another one of the Can-Am 450s. He opened his season with a creditable number 5 spot, dropped down the order at Bella Bella, just didn't like the terrain out there having to settle for a number 8 finish. But on the fast track that was the layout for round number 3 at Heidelberg, he took his best ever GXCC finish with a number 2 spot and backed that up back into his customary number 5 spot coming out of Fenterstorp. Stefanos Muller having his best ride so far and the numbers tell the story. Fifth place at the halfway knuckle. Fourth place rider is a great story on the season as well and for the family. We've got the Ferreira clan doing the business and all sitting inside the top five in their respective categories. Christian Ferreira is doing a sterling job at the moment in the Q1s and it's tough to get the numbers on the page on this gate as well. Sixth place twice at rounds one and two and then at the fast track that really caused a lot of mechanical problems to many of the bikes but for Christian Ferreira Heidelberg was his best ride of the season and his best ride ever on the GXCC Tour where he got his first win under his belt. He dropped down the order a little bit at the final round taking the number seven but that win helped him sit in the number four spot for the championship. Coming all the way from KZN and starting to really rack up the mileage on his machine John John Elwood almost took the first win of the championship but he was still finding his feet in the wild world that is GXCC racing. He got a third at round number one, he improved to a second at round number two. A mechanical blow up of the machine at round number three on the fast one saw him drop down the order but he's still done enough laps on the day to score a number six ride. That's important for his championship and then bounced back to a solid number three spot. It was a different kind of riding style that he is used to when we went to the final round at Ventersdorp but third place keeps John John Elwood in third on the points tally. Second place is a huge story where we see the big kid, Henny Macau Jr. 
He spent a full season and a half developing his hybrid Honda. That is a 450 motocross engine in the Honda TRX chassis, and he muscles that thing around, and it seems to be the perfect fit for the guy. Fourth place with some problems at round number one. Third place, we start to see improvements at round number two. The big fast track also saw some mechanical issues for Macau at the fast one that was Heidelberg, but he had his best race of the season in the cold and technical conditions of Ventersdorp, where we saw him tag a number two spot. A win can't be too far away, but for now, it's second place on points for Macau. And then, the kid that has nailed down a couple of championships over the last couple of years. He is custom made for GXCC Q1 racing. He's a small frame, but he's really aggressive on that 450 Yamaha. He has suffered in the past with mechanicals, but he broke out a freshie for 2021. A win at the opening round, a win at round number two. He was starting to set his stall out early. And even though he was carrying injuries and had to bow out with a third place at the fast one, his closest rivals also had issues on that day. Luck was clearly on the side of Hammond. He didn't need luck though at the final round before he went into the halftime break. Ventersdorp, another win. That's three wins out of four starts for Keenan Hammond. And he is stretching way out ahead of the rest of the chasing pack to try and nail down yet another number one plate on the Yami. Hammond, at the moment, is the fastest kid on the GXCC Tour on the Q1s. second half of the season it's going to be interesting to see if anyone can go up against the wild styles of Hammond. Right now he is running the numbers off front ahead of Macau, Aylwood, Ferreira and Muller. That's the top five and the guys sitting inside the top ten. Kutzer, Swanepoel, Van Josvalt, Sonicus and Hienus. So that's how things looked after four rounds counted for our quad racing championship. Watch out for the next show. It's going to be the pro motorcycles where things get tasty. This GXCC racing action powered by Dunlop was brought to you by SPX Logistics, Dunlop, RME, bearings and transmission, and driven by the Bikers Warehouse. So that was our quaddies. You see the guys and girls to beat as we go forward into the last, what will be one, two, three rounds of the championship that remain on the scorecards. Remember the next event is gonna be in Dalmas. That's gonna be the second racing week of September. So watch out for the press here at Hollywood Hills. We'll be telling you all about the event as it's coming up. But remember that was our last race last year and it was an absolute belt. I can't wait to get on the line for that one. And of course, we'll be racing in different conditions. This will be the tail end of winter. So we should see slight drier conditions as different to what we did at the end of last year which was a bit of a mud fest as we said we're getting up close and personal meeting up with some of our sponsors this week it's time to meet the crew out at rme and this is the facility out in mayerton this is the story of rme how they came to be what they can do and this is rme bearings and transmission enjoy meeting one of our friends out there in the industry Basically, it started with myself, um, got tired of the corporate governance. Um, to serve as a customer out of a corporate point of view, it is very difficult uh, in our line because customer service is first, uh, foremost, um, you cannot not help a customer. And uh, so we got involved with PJ and um, basically it, that's how it was born. Um, he started the company RME, which is part of RME, or Ratamang rather. And uh, that's how we started uh, RME Bearings uh, on the 1st of March uh, last year and literally grown strength to strength. We opened two weeks before lockdown. Obviously, we did not know about uh, the, the lockdown that's going to happen. And uh, we had literally just blown this thing out of the water in that, in that period of time. And, uh, all to, look, at, we have to be honest as well, it's the people that, 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 that uh, is in the team. Peter's support, obviously, being part of the Rattaman group, which is a huge, massive, um, successful group to be involved with. And uh, literally grown strength to strength, that's it. As we know, the Voltron angle, uh, what, 
probably still is the powerhouse, financial powerhouse in South Africa. So Mayatum was central uh, for Johannesburg, Van Abel Park, Sasselberg, the whole area. In saying that, we're not just based in the Volta angle. Uh, we do business as far as Durban, so we are national. The company base, um, the, the customers that we have as well is plays a massive part in our success story as well because it is a loyal customer base. And uh, so Mayathan, yes, absolutely, the, the place to be. Uh, fast, one of the fastest growing metropoles in South Africa, so it, it makes sense to be here. Look, it's, it's to be involved with SKF on its own is a it's another success story as well because to be part of SKF, which is probably the most uh, famous bearing brand in the world, um, it's literally it's an honour to be involved with them. Then we do a lot with Spaniard, we feel industrial, racing, automotive, um, obviously one of the only distributors in this area for Royal Purple, which is a very, very um, niche market for proper racing vehicles. And um, Spaniard, we've got our own brand as well. We saw the gap in the market as well, um, because you need to have an A and a B and a C brand. So we thought, why not bring in our brand? And um, we did it. And that's the philosophy as well with RME. If it doesn't work, we make it work. We don't want to be part of the solution. We want to be the solution. And, uh, and it's basically out of the box thinking. And, and, and I think that is 90% of the success story that, we, with, that, that plays a part in it, that we literally think out of the box. And in, everything has changed. The economy has changed. The customer basis has changed. So you have to adapt. And uh, we did that very well and we still continue to, to, to adapt very well. Customer service is key. That is absolutely, I, I think that basically uh, dropped off the map a bit was customer service, especially with corporate. Um, we are not corporate. If, if you need to service a customer, and it doesn't mean financially you're gonna gain from it, but at the end of the day, a happy customer is the best customer you're gonna have. The long-term goal would be we're going to be national, absolutely, that is the long-term goal. And uh, we're getting there faster than we think, to be honest. Because um, this thing has literally just blown out of proportion. And uh, very, we are really a success story, I think, out of the COVID situation. And look, we are an absolutely amazing team um, with the support of Peter. Um, Peter is just, he's a young guy, he's energetic, he's dynamic, and I think the dynamic uh, um, aspect of Peter and it and it shows it shows you know marketing uh, like we're doing now it's marketing 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 and that's normally the first thing that anyone would cut on and uh, so yeah social media we use it um, it's there it is the next big thing you have to do it and uh, and we're definitely on the ball there absolutely So that was this week's show. Next week, we're going to be chatting to Mike Glover, talking about all things tough enduro, as well as starting our edit on the Pro Motorbike Show. So there's plenty of stuff in the pipeline. We're going to be busy smashing the keyboards and making those edits happen for you guys. You just do what you need to do, and that is keep training, and not long until we see you guys on the line. Remember, get those entries in for Farm Jam. It's on the 14th. Zia Kuachat. I'm still figuring out how to get that pronunciation right, but just out the back of Middleburg, around about two, maybe two and a half hours away from Joburg, about an hour, three quarters, maybe two hours away from Pretoria. So if you guys are quaddies, sorry, unfortunately, no racing for you guys, but it looks like 424 may be having an event towards the end of the racing month of August. I'll keep you guys informed on that, but keep those entries pumping in for Farm Jam if you're a Farm Jammer or a GXCC racer, or just simply want to come out and hang with us at the race and turn a wheel. Get those entries in and we'll see you on the line. Laters.